Welcome in everybody. Hello. Hello. We have sat here on my desk the new Tomb King Bone Dragon, uh, which Games Workshop have obviously very kindly sent over to me to review for you all. So it is a slightly different slightly different video today in terms of a kit review. Uh, I usually, as, as you will probably know from uh, my other kit reviews, I usually kind of have a look at the box, uh, open up the sprue, have a look through the sprues, and uh, then do like a little build montage, uh, which is actually really, really good because I get loads of questions on the build montage with some of the tools and things that I use. Um, but for this one, I wanted to do it slightly differently because I want to do the Tomb King as a, like a, a, a bit of a series of videos. Um, the the first, first of the videos that uh, you've hopefully already seen is me opening up the box and just kind of going through and building some of the um, models and talking about how they're going to kind of fit into the army and what I wanted to do with the army, uh, particularly to kind of refine and and um, and redo my Tomb King army of old. And this this video is going to be kind of something similar as well. And one of those, I, I want to talk about one of the kind of the, the the issues that I have when I build things like this. Uh, and it's obviously it's really really useful and uh, really really kind that Games Workshop send me these things so that I can build them and review them for you uh, but also I have a bit of it's, it's, it's a little bit of worry for trying to not build them the way I want to build them so I don't like building things out of the box that's just it's just part of me I like being my little special snowflake so there's got to be like some like kind of little repos or or some some uh, t tweak um, or conversion, something like that that's going on. Great time for that to pop up. And this this has actually turned into one of those perfect examples. Now, the Bone Giant itself, I really like the Bone Giant. I, I, there's a lot of things that I wanted to do with it. Uh, there was talk, obviously, um, on the Tomb King kind of chit-chats uh, of turning it into a bone crocodile, like just leaving the wings off, and you can 100% do that. It's really, really easy. The wings kind of fit on, onto the uh, like the scapula here. So they uh, and because because it's not like almost a ball and socket joint as well, you can position them any way you like. So if you do want to glue them on, then you can kind of open them up a little bit like I've done, uh, so that they're not kind of uh, grasping onto rocks underneath the base. So you could leave that off there. Um, you could also uh, turn it into a wyvern. I was I was thinking about leaving the front front legs off uh, and then putting the wings down on the on the base as well, so it looks a bit more like a bone wyvern. I think that would look amazing as well. Um, some some really really cool ideas. The head is an absolute pig to build. Um, the, the the registration. The registration for like the the, the little heads because this this uh, the, so the draw comes in two pieces for the bottom and two pieces for the top and then the nose and then the uh, the crown as well so the nose unfortunately on mine was twisted you can just see there you can just see the stress mark there where it was twisted and damaged on the sprue so I managed to let me just take that off so I managed to there we go. Managed to just kind of twist it back in and figure out how it all kind of fits together. But um, yeah, these two, uh, the, the top two jaws kind of glue in down here. The bottom two jaws glue there and then have to sl slot in underneath. So it's a bit of a pain to build. It is, however, very, very cool. And I do like it. Um, I was wondering whether I was going to be able to sort out like a breath attack from it as well. So it could be like have some like loads of scarabs kind of emanating from underneath the jaw and coming out of the mouth or something. And I still might do something like that. Now I want to get a second one of these so that I can have a play. Because I I don't think I want to do the crocodile. I quite like the idea of the dragon with the wings. But I do want to do the wyvern. I think the wyvern would look amazing. Because one of the things I did, as you can see here, um, is dropped the legs down. So normally these legs are twisted forwards and they kind of come up here. Uh, and the same with this one over this side, it's twisted a bit further forward, so it's it's up underneath the, the neck. And I wanted just this really clean neckline, rather than it being um, just interrupted by the by this leg and the foot. So I've I twisted it, it's dead easy to do, um, because this scapula here just kind of fits on and twists. Um, so you just have to clean up. It's got like a, a little sausage that registrates in so that you can glue it in. Uh, I trim that off and then it just twists in. You can twist it any way you like. I just put loads of glue in there to kind of secure it. 
um, and then that I think gives it a little bit more of a cleaner cleaner neckline. Now because I lifted the wings up as well when it sits here on the base, I've also got a little little snake on the base as well which is rather cool, um, when it sits here on the base it then has a bit more uh, a bit more height and presence for, uh, across the uh, the silhouette of the front, uh, which which I like. I like I like silhouettes. Silhouettes are one of my little foibles and like tweaky things, which I really like. Uh, like trying to find nice silhouettes. So um, I've obviously got to add a little bit in down onto uh, underneath the back feet. So I'll sculpt some some rocks to fit in underneath there. Uh, but uh, that is where the bone dragon sits. Now the kit itself is really cool. So the kit, you get tons and tons of stuff in the kit, uh, including, as you can see here, you get a Tomb King, uh, which you can um, give a flail, you can give him a spear, you can give him like a really double-handed capesh, you can give him like a little hand weapon capesh, which is really, really cool. The flail, I have just chopped off, because it has these three little balls down at the bottom for the flail bits. Uh, it has three little balls. I've chopped the bottom ones off and I've given pop three skulls on there so now it's a flail of skulls like the classic classic flail, flail of skulls which is in the rule book so you can have a fl classic flail of skulls now i i really it's, it's quite annoying i i really like the old tomb king models i think the old tomb kings are brilliant i'm not so much of a fan of the one that came with the necro sphinx this guy uh, I cut his cut his weapon off for another conversion. I'm not a big fan of that guy. I much prefer the kind of the old metal ones. I think the old metal ones are lovely. Hopefully, fingers crossed, they'll come out in Forge World Resin. Fingers crossed, because again, like Ushabti, they're gorgeous models. Um, so uh, I think I think Games Workshop kind of missed a little bit not making the Ushabti resin, but that's beside the point. So hopefully, all the Tomb Kings will be resin. And then uh, that will also help with some kind of conversions here and there. So I'd like to get all the Tomb Kings. However, this Tomb King is also, uh, he's just tacked in at the moment. This Tomb King is is utterly, utterly stunning. If you just zoom in a little bit so we can have a look. He is really, really nice. Now, I said in the other video about the scale. Um, and it's I, I just wanted to kind of make a point of in this video saying that it's the scale of the skeletons for me oh there's my necron skeleton sorry i will remove that one uh, my other my like big army uh, that i'm kind of known for is necrons i've got thirty thousand points of necrons so i just kind of had to put a necron head. oh dear um so the, the 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 thing i wanted to say is that the scale of these it's not that the scale of this is too small uh, it's the scale of these ones because they're old classic skeletons like they're all chunky and cartoony they've got massive skulls and look at the size size difference between the skull and the, and the head of the tomb king now all the old tomb king models were the same kind of scale so i don't think there's a scale issue on that um some of the newer sculpts like the resin newer sculpts look a little bit more cartoony uh, almost like a blood bowl aesthetic with uh, like the rib cage uh, showing and the um the um, flesh just kind of stopping quite abruptly uh, but I think that's more of a artistic style and uh, decision for uh, for those more than anything but this guy is really really nice now I don't I, I, I can't, I, and this is where the quandary kind of starts with me because I don't want to put him on a bone dragon I want to have him on a base looking awesome in the middle of my army so I want him down here somewhere and then I'll put I, I kind of, I'm, I, I kind of want to put this guy on the bone dragon and be like, look, he's not great. He's got like short legs and everything, so I'll put him on there, um, and then he can he can be the bone dragon leader. And, and uh, you might say, well, what about the leash priest, Chris? Well, the leash priest, I kind of definitely don't want to put on a bone dragon because the leash priest should be, in my opinion, should be right at the back of the army, hiding away in either, uh, in some skeleton warriors, just like not being touched, like so he doesn't die. So that's fine. I'm not going to put a leash priest on a bone dragon. That's just not my kind of, that's not where my thought process goes. I want to put a tomb king on there or tomb prince, which is fine. Uh, I just don't want to put this one on. Now what I might do, and what I'll probably end up doing at some point, is getting another bone dragon um, and then converting one and sticking him on there as well. But this guy, I, because he's got the flailer skulls as well, it'd be really nice to give him a shield, but I put the wrong cloak on like an idiot. Uh, this this cloak doesn't fit the shield. Um, so I really want to have this guy on um, a base. And like I was saying, this is one of the one of the challenges of starting a new army and kind of practicing and 
planning out what you want to do. So if this guy, if I want this guy on foot, then I need to find somebody else to go on the on the bone dragon. Um, I could quite easily magnetize him, just stick a couple of magnets in his feet or something, or a couple of pins in his feet so that he slots on a base, and then he can slot in the bone dragon. Uh, I think that that would be an, a, a kind of a cool way of doing it. Um, but um, yeah, it's uh, it's a challenge. Um, and then obviously the the repose on the bone dragon. Uh, I do want to get another one because I want to do the the the, the wyvern. Um, I think so. And there's another there's another kind of with with access to the kit how much can i kind of get inspiration and do something completely different with it um and sometimes sometimes i'll get that kind of idea straight away sometimes it will take a little bit of a while uh, and i almost don't want to touch the model until i get that inspiration so a lot of the time when i get these review kits and i know this sounds like like playing a little violin sort of thing a lot of times when i get these review kits for armies and models which I absolutely love I almost don't want to put them together because I want to find some inspiration a couple of weeks later uh, and go oh I'll do that um, but um, yeah so here he is anyway this is the bone dragon uh, like I say I've tweaked him a little bit so he's, he's going to be sitting on that but um, the leash priest let's have a look at the leash priest because I had an idea for the leash priest as soon as I saw this and you'll notice that the how door has been a little bit lower um, so it's dead dead simple to do you just cut off the um, it, <laughs> it looks like it's like uh, balancing on like two massive big poles. It looks way too high for me. So I, I cut the poles off. Um, I broke, snapped um, a couple of the uh, spines off so it didn't look like I cut them. So I just kind of grabbed them and, and twisted them and snapped them off as you can see here. I'll just get a little pointy. Where's my pointer? There we go. So as you can see here, uh, it's got all this stress mark there. That's where I kind of grabbed it and then just twisted it and snapped it off. And then the same there as well and it's literally just cut cut in half and then the how door is kind of stuck a little bit lower down and i just think it looks great it looks far better than just sat right high and uh, now one one thing that you kind of have to just kind of take it sort of thing um is this bit at the back here because this has some um some parchment uh, and some tie-ons which go down to the to the ribs uh, to kind of stress and hold it in place sort of thing and then I'm going to have to sort out something here I'll probably try and put a banner or something on this but uh, this is where the leash priest one comes in now the leash priest because like I was saying I don't want to put a leash priest on a bone dragon that's a silly idea like bone dragon with a leash priest it wants to charge forward into the enemy uh, into the enemy army uh, the bone dragon wants to be killing things all the time you do not want the leash priest doing any of that so what I wanted to do, and this is all tacked on at the moment, uh, I've still got some sculpting to do around the base and everything, but what I wanted to do was turn this into like a little bit of a diorama of a leech priest with like a general's general's tent on the uh, on the top of a, uh, well it was going to be, originally it was going to be a sand dune, but um, I wanted to like a general's tent on the top of a sand dune at the back of the battle, like directing and saying, telling people where to go. Uh, but I couldn't uh, on the size of bases which you can kind of have in in old world now which are uh, 50 mil bases and then it goes to the rectangular ones so the cavalry bases um, and the slightly larger ones for for slightly larger monsters so I didn't want a rectangular base I wanted a square base and ideally I wanted a 60 mil square I thought 60 mil square would be fine uh, but uh, they don't exist in old world which is a bit of a pain uh, and I know this doesn't exist in Old World anyway, and I could have probably got away with it just for a diorama, and I might still do that, get a 60mm plinth or something, but I just wanted it to be possible to put on. Um, so this is a 50mm base, it's just two cavalry bases at the moment stuck together until I can get a square one. Um, but this is like a little general's tent, uh, and I'm going to mount this on a uh, on the rock at the back as that as well. It's just a little bit of a general's tent here uh, to sit um, and do a quick diorama on because he's a really 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 nice model and again it's one of those models that you that you kind of think oh we, he, he he's gonna look really good like in a unit of skeleton warriors he'll just look amazing but because he's got he's, he's got uh, sitting down legs so you're gonna have to cut the legs and really convert him and and, uh, and cut away at him to to make him standing uh, which I probably will do I'll probably grab another bone giant and just uh, bone dragon so that I can do this uh, this leash priest and um, 
but uh, yeah so th this is this is what I'm going to be doing with this guy uh, and then of course he has the amazing sand carrion which is flying off his hand which I just think is stunning absolutely stunning what a cool 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 idea and great kind of execution of the sculpt it's absolutely brilliant and here's his hand here you can see his thumb up at the top he's just got his hand out like that and, and the, all the sand is just pouring off it and turning into this carrion that he's uh, he's summoned um, so that's going to be up on there like that um, fly floating away uh, floating away from the uh, from the rock so that's the plan for these guys um, and uh, that's what we're going to be doing so this is going to be part one of the bone dragon uh, slash leash priest diorama slash paint job or whatever uh, there's going to be loads and loads of parts of this i absolutely promise uh, i mean i've got uh, i've got Kalida here already we've added a couple of extra snakes on the base as well but uh, there's going to be lots of parts to this uh, the next one i just wanted to get this one done before i've kind of started priming this so i can get painting as well um but uh, yeah i wanted to get this video done just so i can kind of talk through some of my thoughts and ideas when i am planning and uh, this this army is so important to me i don't want to mess it up and it's almost it's almost like paralysis through analysis i'm like i'm i'm, I'm thinking about it too much and at some point i am just going to have to crack on and do it um but like i've got so many ideas well not even ideas i've got so many like well that guy's going to be really cool in a unit of skeleton warriors when i don't use a bone dragon but when are you not going to use a bone dragon because the bone dragon is fucking cool so yeah it's it's like trying to trying to convert things for converting sake a little bit but um, I do like doing it uh, and I do like kind of trying to make the army how I want to make it look it makes it look different to everything else um, and uh, and also making use of as many kind of parts of the kit as I can um, so uh, yeah hopefully that all makes sense and hopefully you enjoy the video uh, please drop me a like any subscribe please drop a comment down below if any of that does make sense and if you do also have kind of analysis of paralysis when you're planning an army um i've got <laughs> got so many ideas that i want to kind of do um or not even the ideas that i want to do like ideas that okay i'm not a, not maybe a big fan of that model or i think that should be or could be even cooler like the tomb king chariots uh, the tomb guard chariots sorry um like, do I do I want to make Tomb Guard chariots, or do I want to make Tomb Guard chariots and the normal chariots, or do I just make Tomb Guard chariots and then when they're not Tomb Guard chariots, I just count them as normal chariots? Like, I don't know where I'm going with all this. So, too many ideas, uh, and it's a really really important army, uh, and I'm very very excited to do it. And at some point, I'm going to have to crack on and get things sorted for it because um, we're going to start painting it uh, tomorrow. So there we go. Thank you very much, everybody. Let me know if you have dropped in a, um, a pre-order for these guys. Uh, the Bone Dragon, I think, on his own just makes it worthwhile. I think he's absolutely awesome. Um, and uh, all the dragons from underneath Nehekara. There we go. The Dragon Necropolis. There we are. Right. So thank you very much, everybody. We've got the Leash Priest in the in the background there as well direct in the battle right thanks very much uh, i will see you all again soon i am sure you drop me a like and a follow on instagram and youtube and twitch etc it's just at chris frost and you can find me really really easily and if you've got any questions about my tomb kings uh, or if you've got any questions about the videos there's a law video coming up uh, not laws rules so a rules video coming up as well if you want to go and watch that one if you've got any questions about the rule uh, the rules or the models which i'm building then please drop into twitch and just say hello and drop that question into the chat uh, so thank you very much everybody take care and i will see you next time cheers bye bye